There are so many wounds in this world and so many struggles that are taking place. And there are so many people that are now, no day, nowadays on the streets dealing with all kinds of issues. How do you actually help them? What is the right answer? We hear all kinds of stories, but what is it exactly that you need to do to help people like that? And with me today, my special guest is Debbie Bailey Brown, and she is all about helping people that need help and that don't need how to help themselves. Debbie, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. So you are having a hope choir, but it's not just a typical choir. Tell me about that. Um, okay, so the Hope Street Choir is, we created it to bring people together to create community so that they can receive the healing that comes from music. So in order to do that, we bring whoever will come. And so it creates a bridge from the people who are not housed and those people that are housed. Because the people that, that are without housing, there's judgments against them by the people who have housing that, oh, they can just, you know, pull up their bootstraps and everything. But actually, the, the change happens in community. How are, I, I see what you're saying, and I came to visit you. It was awesome. Yeah. It was my favorite choir of the whole world. <laughs> Even if it wasn't perfect, it was, it, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved yeah. it. But there was people there all together. They were all there. They wanted to be there. And they all built one another up. They encouraged each other. So in this choir are only people that are in housing or that are not in housing. We've had a Simpson University professor come regularly, and then we have people that walk in right off the street. It's both. Yeah, it's just whoever will come. So how does that work? <laughs> well, it's very unpredictable. You don't know on any given day. We've had 26 people one day, and then some, one day we had three people, right? You don't know because if people are not, if they don't have housing, and it's freezing outside, the chances are they're not going to get up and come because it's too cold and they're warm exactly where they're at. So um, we serve a meal in the middle of um, choir. We start with a connection time and then we serve a meal. And the whole time, of course, we're talking and, and checking in with each other. And then we sing music. And we have like now our choir director we, somebody uh, said that she wanted to sing a solo, and so she gets there early to practice with her. And it really is just empowering people and helping them discover what's inside of them. Why are you so passionate about helping these people? How did you get involved in this? 33 years ago, my husband was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, being in that place where, you know, you, I was raised a little church girl, right? So nobody in my family drank. My dad was a preacher's kid, right? And so my, um, you seek out help, you know, from, and it was at a church of a women's, they called it divine wine, right? And they just like mentored you and helped you. Well, f that gave me a heart for the people that, that had addiction and the people that loved those in addiction, and so um, 10 years ago, when I was in BSSM, we started Hope Recovery. And Hope Recovery is um, a meeting for people in addiction. But it's evolved into not just for people in addiction, but people, mothers, fathers, spouses, children, siblings of anyone in addiction. Because when you bring them all together, you know, the different roles that they play, there's, the healing is quicker. Really? Because when, when the addict is talking about his perspective of what happened, and then the mother was, has, has a different understanding about what, what her role what, was in his addiction, so that everyone is learning from everyone else, and it just creates this really, really tight family. And so, I have never heard that before, but it makes 100% sense. And this is something you didn't have at the time, I assume. No. It was not there. So you were on your own. It's usually especially around Christian secrets. Oh, and yeah. And you're stuck in that area. 
And instead of bringing healing in, there's just judgment, unforgiveness, and condemnation. Well, yeah, because, you know, you're raised in a church, right? right? You can imagine back then, 33 years ago, you if you were to tell one of the church ladies, you know, my husband's an alcoholic, you know, what would happen is like, oh, you need to pray for Debbie's husband. You know, he's an alcoholic, right? I mean, that that's right, just right. What, yeah. what it was. And, you know, it's well-intended, well-meant, yeah. and they want to love, but they truly don't know how to help. Yeah. So how did that work for you? So you mean the, the group that I went to? No, no, no. With your husband at the time. How did you work through that? Well, I mean, at first I was like, are you kidding me, God? Like, how did this, how did this happen to me? I don't, I, you know, nobody in my family drank. Um, how, did I, how on earth did I pick this person, right? And, uh, but I, when I speak about, my husband's addiction, I w would say, I would never trade what I went through for who I became. Because who I became was a completely different person than that scared little girl that married that boy. Wow. Yeah. How did you change? How do you change? How do you, who do you become? You become, I became strong. Uh, I became very godly, very trusting, like, I can remember my uh, my leader. I would I wouldn't even ask a question in the group. I mean, I was very extremely shy, uh, and I said, "What happens if my husband doesn't wake up for work in the morning?" And she goes, "Well, that can't be your problem." And I said, "But I have children to feed," and she said, "This is where you trust God," and you're like, oh. <laughs> Oh, just like that, huh? I want to hear more about that in yeah. just a moment. Wow, this stuff is real. It's raw. If you need prayer, 855-515-5550 or go to barktv.org. Stay tuned. Are you ready to inspire and change lives? You can make a difference for a better tomorrow. God created you for more. You matter. There is an unprecedented pandemic of forgotten hearts. You can bring hope and answers. Inmates feel alone, afraid, and abandoned. Now is the time to find, to stand, to change, and transform lives. God loves them unconditionally. Adopt a champion empowers inmates to be a champion within themselves but in their family and in the world. There are three ways you can help. Become part of our team, pray and donate. Together, we can make a difference. You can start today. Go to adoptachampion.org. When your husband drinks too much and you're afraid if he will wake up in the morning and you're not sure how to get food on the table, how do you deal with that? Debbie, this was you. Yeah. They told you you're not responsible for his actions. You're yeah. only responsible for you. But yet it affected everything. Yeah. How did you do it? Well, I went to the meeting, you know, every week and got support. And I would ask, you know, and I would ask very specific questions. And they were very clear that the focus is, is on you. You, you, you know, my opinion I was like, well, why do I have to go to a meeting? I'm not the one with the problem. Right. That's what I would say. But if you're married to someone in addiction, you are the one with the problem, <laughs> right? Because you don't want to live like that. That's, that's not the way I was raised, and that's not the way I wanted to live. And so they just had me uh, focus on uh, getting close to God, trusting God. You know, it, it was always like, you're just going to have to trust God. You just... He's doing something in this moment. To be honest, that's a very frustrating answer at yeah. a moment like that. Yeah. So you trusted God. Did it bring the results you wanted? Well, not immediately, but it was a year, almost a year to the day that I started going to that meeting. On my daughter's second birthday, he woke up and he said, today I'm going to recovery. And I literally, my response was, it's Anna's birthday. 
<laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> You've been waiting a year for this and then you say don't go? What are you thinking? <laughs> I know. He was like, I don't know. I'm going today. And I'm like, okay. Right? And so, uh, I mean, and probably the hardest, the hardest 30 days during that whole period was being alone with a two-year-old and a four-year-old that woke up every morning crying, where's my daddy? Yeah. And it, it, it had to go through that system. Yeah. I now know why you're so passionate about helping those yeah. that don't know how to help themselves and yet that you don't disable them, but actually help them. Yeah. When did you get excited about starting to help other people? Well, Hope Recovery was the beginning, which we started my, I did 2013, 14 was the first year I did BSSM. BSSM is like a school of something? Yeah, a school of supernatural ministry. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. And so I had a group of classmates that we started this group. And as you get, as you see the other side of addiction, because I'm going in as the wife of, a, of someone in recovery. Yeah. But as you get to know people and you, and you have, I mean, like I have a whole bunch of sons now. <laughs> and one of them, my husband and I, um, five years ago, drove him on New Year's Day to, up to Eugene, Oregon to recovery. And he called a couple years ago to just to check in and he said, you know, I sponsor uh, six men now. And he said, there is nothing like seeing the light come back into somebody's eyes. And he says, that is addicting. And I said, yeah, honey, I know. Wow. I know that's addicting. Watching someone come back to life from their addiction is, is just the best thing ever. In fact, my son-in-law asked me the other day, how do you know you're, when you're gone, your life will what do you want to be remembered for? What, you know, How you're did gone, you respond? you're in heaven. And I said, oh, that's easy for me. And he goes, what? And I said that it made a difference in somebody else's lives. Wow. Yeah. And he goes, oh, wow, mom, that's a good answer. <laughs> I'm like, well, you can do that too. <laughs> so you started the Hope Choir. So it's we started Laundry Day first. Tell me about Laundry Day. Well, we went from, uh, once I was out of school, uh, I started going to the Lighthouse Church, which is mostly homeless people. Okay. And we did, out of the Lighthouse Church, we did uh, like every day of the week. Monday, we had a student that did uh, worship on Monday nights. And he, when his year was up for school, we couldn't find anybody else to lead it. Because, you know, most people lead, well, a lot of people that lead worship, they want to do it on a bigger stage than, you know, a little lighthouse church or Hope Recovery or, in, you know, they want a bigger stage. And so I said, let's do karaoke worship, right? And everybody was like, okay. That was probably the best thing ever. It was karaoke. Like, karaoke. I would have <laughs> never thought that how that started. <laughs> and some of the songs were not worship. But we, we, just, we didn't care. It's like you want to get up there and sing. And it was like, you again, you, sit, you saw people come to life. Like there was a guy that I was mentoring in Hope Recovery. And I would take him with me to church sometimes because, you know, they, none of them drive at that point. And anyway, on the way there, I said, so did you bring a song to sing? And he goes, oh, no, 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 I don't sing. And I said, okay. So we get there and about two or three people sing. And he looks over at me and he goes, oh, I can do this. <laughs> and so he, and I said, well, you know, if you get up there and sing, it's a whole nother level of freedom. Just standing up there and on that mic is going to give you a whole nother level of freedom. And so anyway, he gets up there and the next morning he calls and he goes, I woke up going, I did that. I did that. You were right. Another level of freedom. And I said, yeah, because that's, that's what we do. It's like there are so many people just going through the motions and missing out on the blessing of helping other people, of serving other people so that their life is changed. That is so true. That is so true. So you built community with the choir 
yeah. which is the most beautiful choir I've ever seen. You all stand around a grand piano yeah. and it goes all over the place. And there are some voices in that, but it's more than just the voices. It is the people yeah. feeling validated, yeah. loved, accepted, and that sense of belonging. Yeah. What are some of the results that have come out of that Hope Choir? Well, we have um, one girl. She, she came to choir from the very beginning. She was at the Mission, which is our local homeless right. shelter. And she showed up like the first uh, thing. And she, and she loves to sing. I want to hear more about that. A girl, homeless, joining the choir. Stay tuned. Barb TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life and He wants you to have all the benefits. So Debbie, you were sharing something about, about a girl. Tell me a little bit more about her. Okay, she showed up like the first day that we had choir and she really loved to sing. A little bit awkward. Um, she was uh, living at the mission and, but she just really was faithful. She showed up every week. So she was homeless? Basically? Yeah, she was homeless. So she was staying at the mission. And then it was probably like five or six months later, I said, hey, would you like to come to Laundry Day? And she said, well, the mission does my clothes at Laundry Day. And I said, oh, actually, I wanted you to come and volunteer. Would you like to come and volunteer? And she was like, oh, I can volunteer. And I was like, well, yeah, sure, right? And so, but she didn't actually see herself as someone that could volunteer because she was at the mission. And so I was like, no, we would love you to have you come volunteer. And so she started coming to laundry day and you know, the tasks are like we, people have uh, bags of quarters or they put soap in machines and, and so you don't actually hand it. Is this like a laundry mat where you're yeah. going? So you just go to a laundry mat. Yeah. And you don't give them the money, so they can't. Yeah, no, there's you do not specific give reasons them. for that, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. And so you put coins in and soap in. Yeah, and they do their own laundry. Do many come to that? Yeah, we have. We average. Well, one one uh, one day we had a hundred and eight people. Oh, yeah, in one laundry mat. Yeah, in one laundry that mat. That doesn't work. Yeah, no, it didn't work. <laughs> It was, yeah, we didn't get out of there till, we started at like nine in the morning and we didn't get done till like six. It was, it was, I said, we can't put our volunteers through this. This is just too much. So we cut, we shortened the check-in time. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon and we shortened it to 12. And you know, you have to be there by 12. And of course people, people will come late and still want in it. And then part of the thing about laundry day is you, when they've been homeless, they're not used to having to follow any rules or guidelines. And so part of what we were doing is like, no, you know, you have to be here by this amount of time. You cannot leave the property, right? We have very, just a few guidelines, but they need to learn that they, if they want their wash done, they have to follow the rules, right? Which is something new for a lot of them. So she came, does an amazing job. She's very cheerful, a um, little bit awkward, but we don't care. And then probably three or four months later, I said, hey, would you like to come to Hope Recovery? And she was like, sure. And I said, you know, we're really good at creating family there. 
What is Hope Recovery? Is that the choir? No, Hope Recovery is the, um, the recovery group, the addiction group. So we bring, her, we bring her to that. And she would ride her bike from down by Wind River. Well, it's probably, I'd say, 15 miles. Wow. She would ride her bike there. And then we'd try and get somebody to transport her bike back. But, um, and so she, well, I did not know at the time that she was struggling with alcohol. I just invited her because, well, we do family and this would be a great place for you to come. So, so she came to a recovery place who needed recovery without you knowing it. Yeah, I didn't know. I oh, didn't that's know totally it. got on a moment like that. Yeah. It, yeah, it was amazing. And so now she she fixes cookies almost every week for the recovery group. She makes homemade cookies. She has her own apartment. Wow. Yeah. And she's, and yeah, and she contributes and she's just, and she even says about herself, I can't believe how much I've grown. I'm just not the person that I was when you met me. And we're like, no, you're not. You are not that person anymore just so full of life and happy and cheerful and f just... Now, there are so many people at the street. Yeah. Why is she a success story? What is different about what you're doing compared to what other people are doing? Well, I think the biggest thing is you, you have to find what they love. You what know, is it that they love? It depends. It depends on the person. Like you might, some people like might love art. Some people, you know, uh, well, music, of course. But, like, I have one guy in recovery. He loves doing yard work, right? And I'm like, why don't you start your own yard work company? Right. Um, do, you, can do, you can be anything you want to be if you're clean and sober. You can't, you can't be anything when you're, when you're not. Now, you know, I, I grabbed some Bible verses about this because, you know, that's yep. what I do. Yep. So, but, but I loved what this said. So uh, it says here in John 5, starting at verse 3, True love for God means obeying His commands, and His commands don't weigh up as down as heavy burdens. You see, every child of God overcomes the world, for our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating the power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You believe the Son is of God, this, Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. You minister to those people, and then you totally meet them where they're at. Yeah. And that creates community. Yeah. That's interesting. And also says here in Psalm 140, 46, you open the eyes of the blind and you fully restore those bent over with shame. That's what you're talking about. You love those who love and honor you. You watch over strangers and immigrants and support the fatherless and widows. And it goes on and on and on. I know there have been times that you have been doing as the Bible is teaching, the love that you were given and the support in the community that you had that grew inside of you for your husbands. Yeah. You loved them no matter what, even if I'm sure there were days you wanted to do differently. Yeah. And you chose to rely on him with trust. How do you handle those moments that you get really burned by those that you're serving? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, we, had an, uh, we used to do two laundry days a month. Uh. And the place where we did the second laundry day, they called up one day and said that they didn't think our guests had gratitude and they didn't want to be host laundry day anymore. And we said, okay, that's fine. And so when I talked with my co-leader, Joe, I said, you know, if you're in this for their gratitude, you're not in it for the right reason. I don't have any expectation that you're going to thank me for what I do for you. That's, they're not in that place yet. But I will tell you this, you take a, a kid, which there's a guy, Henry, that comes to Hope Recovery, 10 years in prison, 12 years on the street, and he had the, um, the opportunity to go into recovery, and he has a job, he has an apartment, 
He has, uh, he hadn't seen his daughter since she was two and she's 14. And he has both of his kids now living with him. Wow. It, it, you, it changes everything. Oh, yeah. He's it changes like, everything. His level of joy is so extravagant and so overflowing every day he posts. It makes it all worth yeah. it for what you do today. Yeah. Debbie, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Keep doing what you're doing. Wow. Let's do things as God would do them. God loves you, and so do I. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com.